Well, let's get started. Good. So a lot of people, a lot of you people know each other from the industry, but uh, uh, I want to welcome everyone that has taken the time to come on and join in our webinar. My name is Pete Sherrill, <clears throat> excuse me, president of the Iowa Group, and I have the pleasure of introducing our special guest today, uh, Tom Jordan. Uh, Thomas Jordan and Tom, thank you very much for uh, participating in our webinar. And if you don't mind taking uh, taking a few minutes, maybe just to um, introduce yourself and and tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, yeah, Tom Jordan. I'm in. I'm the director of cemeteries in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Um, got my start in the cemetery world uh, with the Diocese of Palm Beach in Florida, about 15, a little over 15 years ago. Uh, and noticed uh, very quickly uh, this phenomenon of sinking markers. I know we're going to get to that, but it, uh, it it was a I'm so fascinated by the concept of the, the earth just swallowing up these things as they lay there and, and don't bother anybody. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 it's a great ministry and I, uh, I have really come, come to all this Cincinnati area. And as you said, there's a lot of people on the on the line here that uh, rubbed elbows with at various conventions and, and different events. And it's good to see you all here. Great, great. Well, thank you again, Tom. We, we really appreciate it and for you coming on to, and sharing your experiences with us. So um, <clears throat> before we dive into the, the these topics, um, anybody from the audience, if you have any questions or whatnot, just um, actually use the, uh, the chat and uh, type them in. And, um, you know, we have other people like Charles who are going to be uh, monitoring the questions and we can answer the questions as we go along. So Tom, talk to us about the challenges that the industry has faced when it comes to sinking markers and cracking granite markers. Well, as I said, it's been a phenomenon, you know, in the just in the years that I've been involved um, with it. And, and you probably all are familiar with you, you visit a, a cemetery that's inactive and that maybe hasn't been cared for as well as it should be in, in recent years. And you can find markers that are almost swallowed up by the ground or tree roots if it's near a tree. Um, and the cost of, of raising these and repairing them is, is, is real, uh, not only in labor, but you also put your, your, your team at risk with, for an injury anytime they're mm -hmm. handling a marker or whatnot. And then there's the, uh, the resources involved, sometimes it's just concrete screening, little tamping of the soils, what we always did. Um, I actually came across uh, MonuGrid on, I believe, LinkedIn, uh, looking at one of your uh, one of your monument repair gentlemen, uh, Tom Class, I think it was up in yes. Canada, yep. was touting the benefits of it. I was fascinated at, about it for a while in Florida, and then when I got up here, uh, saw an immediate need for it. Good stuff, good stuff. So historically, what have you done to try and solve these problems prior to, to MonuGrid? Well, it was, it, more often than not, it was kind of a one-off thing. Maybe the guys would notice one that was in bad shape and, and I referred to the team outside or maybe one of our uh, advisors was out on the grounds and they'd bring it to <clears> attention. <throat> but often it was a customer complaint and that their, their marker was covered with dirt or, or whatnot. So right. it addressed them either on a one-off situation or several in the area if they if they had the time to go ahead and address some around the one that they were their attention was called to um, in addition to that when I got to Cincinnati they uh, they had been on a on a three-year um, process of paying some an outside company to raise markers by the by the hundreds and wow. it was getting quite expensive so when you say expensive what were you looking at uh roughly fifty thousand dollars the previous each of the previous two years and they were wow. planning to spend another fifty thousand that's huge eh? and that so was only that was only a, a, a not even a quarter of the cemetery space a, a portion of it wow that's uh, certainly a lot of money for sure so based on your experience how open are industry leaders like you looking at to solve with innovation. So for example, new ways of doing things versus being fine with just the way, you know, just fixing the issue, temporary solutions over and over again. Is it a cost issue or is it an issue of getting the team to do things a different way? 
I think it's a little bit of all of those. Um, you know, we're human, so like any other industry, we we you know, if, if it ain't broke, why well, fix it? Or you know, you have to be made aware of a new a new opportunity or a new option. And and but I, what I definitely have found is that the people that I've encountered at different functions, like the Catholic Cemetery Conference and other regional and state organizations, they're definitely open to new ideas, but they, it needs to be vetted. They need to be convinced. Often it comes through a referral. Um, but but definitely right. just in the time I've been around, we've adopted a lot of new methods and new products because uh, there's some good stuff coming along. And MonuGrid, to me, I was, it seemed too good to be true. Um, <laughs> I, you and I probably talked several times before we finally we uh, decided to do it. Uh, the, the old method of just raising it and, and waiting for the next time it sunk was, was very futile. You knew you were going to have to do it again. And, and sometimes it starts really early after the original installation other times you might get a few years before it starts sinking right right so you did it's probably safe for me to say that you did have a healthy dose of uh, skepticism at the start always always <laughs> and how did you overcome that when you know and and the reason i ask that is that i speak to a lot of cemeteries every day of course right. so i speak to a lot of superintendents and and cemetery managers and the first thing, you know, especially on the uprights, um, what do you mean replacing concrete with plastic? Like that, it, it doesn't seem to jive for them, you know, until they actually understand it more. But if you can it, explain sounds, your skepticism. Yeah, it sounds too good to be true. Uh, yeah. Especially it, where I'm at now, we don't have a lot of upright mining. It's mostly flat, but we we have experimented with it in with benches and uprights. I, there's another cemetery that we have a lot of upright monuments to uh, to restore, and uh, so we're looking forward to employing money good. But yeah, it sounds too simple. Uh, but but having talked to you several times and visited the website, getting a feel for the science behind it, and then whatever skepticism was left was just a matter of time. We've been using it now for close to four and a half years, and yep. No reason to doubt it so far. That's great. That's great, and I, and I appreciate you know that you do speak about your experiences, and that helps you know the industry a lot when it comes to trying to make changes and and trying to you know introduce new innovative ways of doing things. And um, so ultimately, you went with MoneyGrid. And for those on the call who aren't aware or familiar with MoneyGrid, let me give you just a brief overview of what MoneyGrid is. So MoneyGrid is an innovative engineered reinforced soil structure system designed to address the common challenges faced by cemeteries, which is sinking memorials over time. So MoneyGrid, which is part of the geosynthetics family, is a, a, a stiff but yet flexible three-dimensional geocell that provides confinement and provides stability and support for memorial foundations. So reinforced soil structures is not new to the construction industry. It's been around for about 40, 50 years, and it's actually a standard practice in the industry now. So when we talk about reinforced soil structures, um, everybody on this call drives on reinforced soil structures every day without even knowing it. So bridge abutments, big retaining walls, up along uh, highways, it's no longer cast in stone concrete, or um, it, it's all done with reinforced soil structures. And the reason for that is number one, it's very good, it's very strong, and number two, uh, it prevents any movement um, from happening in the soils. Uh, so, so MonuGrid is made from low density polyethylene, which is very, very important aspect of the plastic, which is, Low density polyethylene will not crack under pressures or it won't and will stay flexible under extreme freezing temperatures. So that's why it's very, very important that we use low density polyethylene. At the end of the day, it's recycled plastic bags. And that type of plastic remains very uh, polyable and and doesn't crack. We could bend ours in half and it doesn't not break. So that's the important aspect of the recipe of MonoGrid, but MonoGrid also eliminates the need to excavate. And you don't need to go to frost depth anymore because reinforced soil structures are non-frost susceptible. So the days of having to dig four feet 
uh, to, you know, in Canada, our frost goes down to four feet. You don't have to do that anymore because again, the, the, um, the actual uh, reinforced soil structures um, doesn't allow for frost to heave things. So I'm just going to let somebody else in here. Give me a second. Sorry about that. So Monogrid mimics a snowshoe and disperses the weight and preventing the memorial from sinking. And we provide all of the training and we can go all of over all of the technical information on another call with you guys. We could do that one on one. We could do it with your team. But Monogrid comes in different sizes. So as you could see, the 20 by 20, which is typically used for upright monuments, benches, uh, columbariums. We've designed a lot of columbariums. Uh, and actually, the picture that you see behind me is a cremation garden that was created uh, a few years ago. Um, and it's all sitting on Monugrid. So no more concrete. So concrete comes, oh, sorry, <laughs> concrete. Monugrid comes in three different sizes. So you have the 20 by 20. The 16 by 24, which is typically for flat markers. Um, and then we have, sorry, um, our latest design, which is the Monugrid Plus, which is designed for the bronze on granite memorials with a vase. So what sets us apart is its versatility and the ease of installation. In addition to its practical benefits and attributes, Monogrid also offers, again, financial advantages for cemeteries by reducing the need for frequent repairs and maintenance associated with sinking memorials. So if, for more information, you could visit our website at uh, iowat.com. So Tom, how did your initial installation go when you first started using it? Well, it, it was more about me convincing the team that this this was worth trying. They definitely were not familiar with the concept, um, had that healthy level of skepticism, maybe even a little unhealthy skepticism. Sure. Uh, but they gave, you know, we, we, we decided, you know, they, they committed to trying some samples with it. They uh, took a few tries to get comfortable with the, the, the gravel. I, I don't know if we changed yeah. the, uh, the, the size of the gravel we, we were using and whatnot, but they, little by little, Came, became convinced and prior to me preparing for this call I had, had I revisited with my superintendent um, and he he is 100% a fan at this point he, he reports uh, zero concerns about it and uh, understands that as he puts it sometimes in as, as soon as six months after original installation these markers start sinking and he's seen none of that in the hundreds of markers that we've uh, used this on. Well, that's great. That's great news. And, and you know, I, I'm glad you bring that up because, you know, typically a lot of cemeteries, obviously for the last, you know, maybe 100 years have been using concrete, especially for uprights. And when a concrete foundation starts to move and starts to sink or starts to lean, there's no way of fixing that. And um, it, it's it's called an excavation and you're starting all over again. And a lot of times, a lot of cemeteries just can't afford to do that. And um, so, you know, families start to complain, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I will never say 100% ever that Monogrid will never move. I can't control what's happening in the earth or, or anything like that or any movement. But I can certainly tell you that if there was movement with Monogrid and, and something started to move, it's the easiest, easiest thing to repair versus concrete. Concrete, you can't. You can't fix it. You can't level it, especially if you're going down three feet. Um, whereas Monogrid is such an easy adjustment. So, what are your plans, Tom, moving forward with respect to Monogrid? Well, let me let me expand a little bit on the results that we've had too, just to hammer sure. that home. Um, yeah, please. Yeah, pr probably within the first year of our using Monogrid, uh, I sh there was a clear delineation between the skepticism was gone. And that was when my superintendent came in and talked about they were digging a grave, soil conditions weren't the greatest and the grave started to collapse. And then often when it happens, adjacent graves start to collapse. They, they, uh, the, the soil from those graves start falling in. And many times if there's a marker on those graves, they will fall in with the dirt and has to be retrieved and then reset. And oftentimes you store it till, till the, the, the soil is settled enough and it becomes a customer service issue because families come and want you know you they call them ahead of time or, or they're wondering where their marker is 
in this case, he witnessed the, the grave adjacent to the one they were digging collapse, but MonuGrid held the marker in place above the ground, even with soil below it falling out. And he was thoroughly impressed. And in in the couple of years since then, we've seen, we've witnessed that on more than one occasion. Yeah, well, that no, that's a great story, and I'm I'm glad you you uh, you brought that up because reinforced soil structures, when it's well done and well compacted, uh, you can open the face in front of it, and uh, you know, for the most part, it, it will stay intact. Um, and we cover all that in the training as well. But no, that's that's yeah. And as far, that's as, far as what our plans are, we're going to continue to use. Um, we we have primarily uh, flat markers in at Gate of Heaven, but in another cemetery that we operate, it's uh, an older cemetery with a lot of uprights that are in need of repair. We intend to, we've already re replaced a couple. We've installed a couple of new uprights using only MonuGrid. And then uh, in both cemeteries, we've used, uh, used MonuGrid for benches as well. And so far, uh, very pleased with the results. Good stuff, good stuff. But before we go to questions, uh, Tom, I just wanted to ask you, so what would you say is the biggest thing as far as the cost savings uh, and what has it done to your operating budget in moving forward like in looking and looking forward? Initially, we saw it as an investment in the long term, um, knowing that we had spent at 50,000 a year for several years uh, raising markers. Uh, however, when I came in, I, 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 I stopped the third year of that plan, which, which was $50,000. And in the four and a half years since then, we have not, we've spent maybe a third of that using MonuGrid of what we were going to pay someone else to raise markers. Um, so it, it costs a little more to use MonuGrid an, initially. Right. But after the first or first time we would have to raise those markers, we're going to, we're going to recoup that. It also as I said, when you're digging and you don't have to worry about the, the marker collapsing at the, the nearby graves, um, there's a cost savings there. So I won't turn back. Um, nice, nice. And I'm glad always, I'm... I'll Sorry, probably always tell you I need a couple more years to be 100% convinced, but so far, <laughs> no regrets. That's okay, that's okay. There's no problem, because I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from you in a couple of years <laughs> but you brought up the 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 cost issue and uh, i've had some interesting conversations with with cemeterians and they said you know what you know we, we we'd like to raise our our markers but you know putting monogrid underneath it like you suggested you know is an added cost and and what i shared with you last week is that i've been we we've come with a I created a method where MonuGrid could actually become a revenue generating mechanism for cemeteries. And what I mean by that is, if you treat MonuGrid as you would treat any other product you buy for resale, uh, you can make profit from it and you can actually cover your costs. And, I'll, I, and as a, a quick example, and again, I can go over this with individual cemeteries and talk about their, their budgets and their costs, but you know if if you if you embed a nominal fee i'll use $100 as an example into your installation fee your current installation fee and i'm not suggesting that you raise the price of your memorials but if you if you embed that $100 fee into your installation costs you, you're creating a new revenue stream that will cover your costs and leave you with profit so now if every time you're installing a new one you do that you will have some budgets to go out and repair some of the ones that really need repair and you want to put money grid under there so you're covering your costs and maybe making profits at the same time but that's for another another subject or another we, session we did discuss that in uh since our last conversation pete we're yeah. we're gonna develop probably in in collaboration with you a, a brochure to present to our customers we we do all of the installations in our cemeteries, even right. if it's sold from an outside monument. Coming dealer. from an outside. Yep. And this is a great statement. Here's why we want to control that. And here's what you're, the value you're getting uh, for this installation. And also to, to clarify, on an upright monument or a bench, it, Monument Good is an immediate cost savings uh, yep. versus digging below the frost line, pouring a foundation and all everything else involved in that. So. Um, it's only on the on the flat markers where it was a little more expensive. That's right. Up front, but not for the long term. 
that's right and i'm glad you brought that up because what we do typically with with cemeteries who are really interested in moving forward and coming on board we actually have a spreadsheet that we put on our screen and we actually plug in their numbers as to what their costs are and especially with concrete and we show an 83 percent cost savings and the big kicker on in all of this is the amount of labor that you're going to actually recapture as far as time goes is huge is huge and a lot of cemeteries struggle with labor right they struggle with having people stay and having people work and whatnot so um so thank you for same that goes, so same goes for raising markers eventually you're going to either struggle to fit that in between the normal cemetery yeah. processes or you're going to pay an outside party uh, that's so it. absolutely that's it so um just as this last slide before questions so i want offers virtual installation training so anytime a cemetery buys either one tile or, or buys a pallet um, we go through the whole installation process with them we have a staff that is does that training the technical training we have uh, an engineer a geostructural engineer that is part of our team as well and so if you have challenges with different types of soils we address that, we tell you how to do that, we'll show you, we'll walk you through. We'll even FaceTime with you when you do your first installation that uh, we can help you uh, with Jonathan being on the call and we'll go through the steps with you. And so we offer technical support for the whole, the whole process. Um, so I'm just gonna stop sharing here and we'll just go back to, uh, to our screen. So here. So we're back here. So is there any questions? Um, feel free to ask them or, or type Nick, them maybe out. Mike, Tom, um, do you ever have to move a marker to do a burial if you do a pre-need install on that marker? And if Geotech is in there, do you wait for the burial to put it in or do you just remove it? How does that work? It depends on the size of the grave. Some of our graves are 10 feet where you don't have to disturb the marker once it's there. Um, and others that are eight foot, we would we would remove it and then reinstall it. And uh, the one thing you don't have to do with a little bit of tamping and, and sometimes watering of the graves, we don't have to wait as long um, to install money grid marker versus if we were gonna just uh, put the concrete screening down or some gravel. And so when you're removing that product versus a floating foundation, is it easier, same or harder? Uh, about the same. Uh, it's okay. easy to pick up on your grid. It's just that you saw that waffle pattern that you have it. Just uh, grab it, and you you may leave behind the gravel or and need to reuse either reuse it or get some new gravel. But yeah, I wouldn't say there's any difference in um, removing it and reinstalling it. Thank you. Initially. Uh, we have different size markers as well and money grid has a couple of different sizes so there's some cutting involved um but once you've installed it we wouldn't have to cut it again we just reuse it and uh, another innovation that they've done recently as you saw in the one of the pictures is they've added that vase hole originally we would cut out a hole for the vases but they've they've adapted their product to accommodate that yeah and we always like to innovate right so we always listen to what the industry is looking for and uh, we, we like to to innovate, invent, and uh, and introduce it to the cemetery industry. Holy shit, there are those ones. I got a question. Yeah. Um, so for argument's sake, let's just say a two foot by three foot upright monument. How big of a pad would you need to put uh, in the ground to support that upright monument? Jonathan, are you on the call? Yeah, he is. Yes, sir. Oh, could you could you repeat your question? I'll let Jonathan, our technical guy. We go, so let's just say we have a two foot wide by three foot high, you know, foot and a say a uh, foot and a half uh, deep monument, upright monument. Right. How big of a footprint or pad of the monument grid would you have to install for the monument to sit on? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So as Pete said, um, we sort of create like the snowshoe effect, right? So spreading the load over a larger area. So what we suggest is that you 
exceed the footprint of the monument by at least one to two inches. Sure. Um, knowing full well that this is not, you know, maybe it's not possible in your cemetery because the, the monuments are so close together. So you can cut it and trim it to the size of the actual monument. Um, and that's not a make or break situation. It's not going to completely fail the foundation if you cut it to the size of the actual monument. But we always like to say that the bigger, the better, right? So if you put in a grid and it's sticking out five inches on each side, and it's not interfering with anything, then let it be. Because the bigger footprint, the better, the more it spreads out the load, uh, the better it's going to work. But that being said, we recommend one to two inches, knowing full well that you don't always have the space in the cemetery to go beyond the monument that much. Um, you know, like Mount Lebanon in New York, the, the, the monuments are stuck together one on top of each other. So there's no room there for you know, a, a bigger footprint than the monument. So those are trimmed uh, exactly to the size of the monument. So. Thanks, John. Second question. Um, is it possible to utilize them in the same way you would put in, say, a strip foundation and literally put these side by side, connect them together? So now you're really uh, distributing the weight across say four or five hundred linear feet absolutely and then you can put your you can do that absolutely so look at john yeah, so if picture. you uh if you see behind me now i i uh i'm in office mode right now so uh <laughs> forgive me for not doing my hair and stuff like that but if you uh <laughs> i'm usually on site so i wear a hat anyway but if you look at the picture behind me that's veterans affairs in montreal uh where we actually took out i think it's three thousand veteran monuments took them all out um redid strip foundations for each and every one of them and then put them back on and now it, it you know it's soil and seed around all of them um so you could do strip foundations and in my experience strip foundations you know are are the best because like you said then you have a hundred feet working for you um and they're easy to make they're easy to build as well you can build these yourselves within a day uh, I've gone to, well, we're in Canada here, so I've, I've made a few trips to Montreal uh, to a cemetery where they want to build pre-need and strip foundations like this, and they can build two of these strips in one day. So that's that's a lot of monuments that you can set for the time awesome. that you need to actually build these foundations. Yeah, and just to elaborate on that, uh, we've done well over 25,000 veteran markers in Canada in the last three, four years. So it's uh, Veterans Affairs had a problem, just like Tom explained. You know, these markers were sinking all over the place, and and they wanted to end that. So they started using MonuGrid, um, and uh, they haven't looked back since. And it's important to say, I think, too, that these monuments are sitting on four inches of granular soil, and the MonuGrid on top. So there's not there's not much to it, not much cost involved either. We, we had talked previously a couple of years ago, I think, and uh, mm -hmm. Anthony, to answer your question about the footprint, this this product, if you look if it's the website, is also um, recommended for use under columbariums. Wow. I uh, I fully intend wow. to do that one of these days. That might be one of our next projects. Uh, so it, it's definitely got a uh, a lot of su you know, support capabilities. Wow. Yeah, and the beauty is that we will give you all of the designs we'll give you um, engineered designs and we actually engineer it so that you can have it aesthetically appealing so that you your money grid is layered and all that kind of stuff and you can have all of your concrete pavers sitting on money grid as well so therefore you're not pouring any concrete you have a nice aesthetic finish uh -huh. sitting on uh, concrete pavers so we have all those wow. designs and we've done uh, SCI has done some columbariums in that fashion as well. So again, reinforced soil structures is not new to the world. It's just new to the cemetery industry because we've introduced it. Excuse me. I'm getting uh, pavers done in my backyard right now, and uh, they're just using the crushed stone. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it seems to last for, you know, 
20 years without them sinking, just using the stone alone. Um, what's the difference between that and just using the regular stone? Well, no, there's definitely, you know, the, the industry with, when it comes to the, um, the, the doing pavers or, or pavements, um, you're going to have less excavation required when you're doing this and you have a confinement, right? Uh, so it, it, it really eliminates the, the settlement that can happen, especially in cemeteries when you're talking, um, if, if you were to just lay this on granular and not have the mechanism, which is the money grid to confine the product, uh, to confine the granulars and stop the movement, uh, that's where the the money grid really comes into play. Again, Jonathan can explain that technically better than I can. Um, that's why I pay him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Pete, Pete hit the nail on the head there with with the reduced excavation. So the difference is if you're if you're looking at an eighteen inch base with granular, you have to add much more granular for it to be solid than you would if you're confining that granular inside of the grid. So basically you can look at the grid as rebar for soil. So when you pour concrete, if you want to reinforce concrete sections because concrete is low in tensile strength. So you can tear concrete apart very easily. And that's proven because of reinforced concrete. They add rebar to reinforce concrete so that you can't, the pressure can't tear it apart. So basically this is rebar for soil. So by filling up the gravel inside of the cells, you're effectively trapping it. So as the pressure is trying to push that gravel aside, which is the main cause for settlement, it can't do it. It can't do it because our grid can support 3,500 tons per square meter when it's full. You'd have to exude that much pressure on the grid so that it breaks and then the granulars uh, would move laterally or sideways, which would cause your the settlement of, of the pavement structure. And so the main difference is that it's the weight distribution, the confinement and the excavation requirements are cut in half. So instead of having an 18 inch base in there, you could have a, a seven, nine, six inch base uh, and then lay your pavers directly on top. We do a lot of pavement structure designs uh, for a company called Unilock, who is one of the largest concrete pavers, uh, commercial space. And we do a lot of designs where they're using monogate underneath. So in the past, what they would do with pavers, if they had un, uh, or soil that was, you know, a little bit weak, or they wanted to reinforce it, they would actually pour a uh, four-inch concrete slab everywhere, and then lay the pavers on top. What happens with that is now you're adding an extremely uh, uh, an extreme amount of weight to the soil that's probably not capable of holding it. With MonuGrid, each tile less weighs than three, less than three pounds. So you're not adding a whole bunch of weight to the soil like you would with concrete. So you're reducing the amount of stress that's actually put on the soil. And with that snowshoe effect, when you're spreading the load over a larger area, those pavers or the monument that you're putting on the grid will actually feel lighter on the soil than it does on top, which, with concrete is the absolute opposite. So let's take the example of a, you know, a one foot thick monument. If you have a two foot by three foot by one thick, uh, one foot thick monument, and then you go and pour three feet of concrete, now your monument's four feet thick. With monument, it's the opposite. You're leaving that monument as is. You're not disturbing the soil as much because you're not digging as deep and you're not adding weight to the soil because you're replacing soil with soil and then you're reinforcing it. So really the only stress on the ground is what's left of the weight of the monument after it's been transferred through the, 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 the layers of grid. Thanks, John. Yep. I do this every weekend, by the way, everyone. I install hot tubs on this, spas, mini homes, micro homes, RV parking. I do it out of grass, whatever you want. <laughs> so if you have any questions or you want a one-on-one -on -one or just send me an email in the chat. Uh, my email's in the chat and we can we can go more into depth into these things. So I, I, I do a, a lot of flat markers here in this cemetery, Mount Carmel Cemetery in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, how much gravel would you need for a regular bronze marker before you put that on top? So bronze on granite marker with a vase? Yep. 
<clears throat> with or without a beach? Okay. Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, so our minimum excavation requirement for flat markers, because they're not, you know, they're not that heavy, uh, is four to six inches of gravel. So you can literally, you know, remove the grass, go down four, six inches, add your granular soil, compact it, the grid goes on top, and then you set the monument. So when I do instructional videos here, I usually do them in my backyard because it's easier and I can install and remove foundations as many times as I want. It takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to do a, a typical install and that would be ready to hold an upright or, or a flat marker. So our recommended is four to six inches for a flat marker with one layer of money grid directly on top. One more question. Do you sure. prefer gravel or chips? So it so that's that's one of the advantages of MonuGrid and having me on your side is we can evaluate what type of infill you put into your MonuGrid depending on what type of soil you're working with. So again, with concrete, it's pour it in and hope. <laughs> Whereas we actually have a conversation with you, figure out what type of soil you're working with that day, and then we can modify the infill to suit your needs. So let's say you're dealing with war more water, then I'd recommend the draining gravel. That way you're building sort of a natural catch basin. The water can sit in there as long as it wants and it doesn't deteriorate any of the material or have any ill effect to the, the, the monument up top. So most of the installations are done with a, a uh, crusher run, uh, modified three quarter inch. So that's a well graded gravel with sizes ranging from zero, which will be the dust, all the way to three quarter. And you don't want one material more than the other. You try and get a, a sort of an even mix. And this is this promotes drainability, so it remains free draining. But all of the smarter, smaller particles interacting together make sure that you have a really tight compaction. So there's not much loose gravel in there. Um, but the fact remains that it's still free draining, so the water can do whatever it needs to do in there without affecting the foundation. So to answer your question, uh, three quarter inch uh, modified Zero uh, three pressure quarter. run. Sometimes it's called three quarter minus. Uh, depends where you live. <laughs> it might be called a bunch of different things. And we cover all that in the, in the actual training itself. So. Yeah, and uh, you know, if, if you buy MonuGrid and you're not sure where to find that gravel, I'll do the research on my end and I'll let you know which vendors have it and then you can go get it. Thank you. Do you guys have any videos that are that show the installation? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so during our training sessions, uh, I have videos for every step of the way. Uh, even in the installation manual, the installation manual is full of QR codes that lead back to our YouTube video. So let's say that you're you're wondering what type of gravel you need. You can scan the QR code and I have a video there of me in the quarry, you know, beside the pile of gravel that you need. So you know exactly what it looks like uh, down to the 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 actual leveling, the fine leveling of the monument. Um, I have videos for everything. Here. Any more questions? It's all in my backyard too, like I said. So if you have a question and I don't have a video for it, I'll go back there and do it. 15 minutes <laughs> later, I'll send you the video. <laughs> Thanks, John. Any more questions? So again, you can reach us by email. Um, or you can go on our website, iowat.com. Tom, um, can't thank you enough for being our guest speaker. We really appreciate it, and uh, we appreciate your loyalty to Monogrid. And uh, and uh, well, you delivered on everything you promised, so it was an easy easy commitment. Well, that's great. I really appreciate that. So, if there's any no other questions, thank you everyone for attending, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. And again, we're here to support you, so don't be shy.